Thank you. I'm Lindsay Grace, Knight Chair of Interactive Media at the University of Miami, and this is Katie. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie. Uh, welcome to News Games Flyby State of the Practice 2020. Uh, our goal here is to give you a quick sense of what's been happening in news games use and creation in the past several years. So um, as mentioned, my name is Lindsay Grace. I'm currently the Knight Chair of Interactive Media at the University of Miami, and I'm also the Vice President of the Higher Education Video Game Alliance um, in DC. Uh, last year, I published a book titled Doing Things with Games, Social Impact Through Play. Uh, in chapter six and seven of that book, I explore the current state of news games and news game design. Uh, and I also spent time uh, leading an initiative called JOLT, which uh, stands for Innovation in Journalism Through Game Design. Uh, prior Games for Change presentations have come, covered that work. And I've also published several papers and journal articles, et cetera, on news games. This work is a subset of my larger uh, research and publication, which aims publications, which aim largely at social impact through game design. That work uh, in 2019 was actually uh, recognized by the Games for Change uh, organization, uh, which gave me the Vanguard Award winner, uh, Vanguard Award uh, in 2019. If you ever there. Uh, so curious about any of my other work, you can always just check out professorgrace.com or uh, feel free to um, look me up on places like Wikipedia. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Huang, a graduate student and a research assistant at the University of Miami. I'm very happy to be here today and special thanks to the Games for Change community for making this online festival accessible to the public being together apart in the context of COVID and allowing people to join conversation from all over the world is pretty amazing. I also wanna thank Lindsay for making this possible. So a little bit about myself, I am a digital designer with a background in art and advertising. I'm currently pursuing my master's in interactive media. I'm also a research assistant who was luckily given the opportunity to do an in-depth research on news games. If you're not familiar with the term news game, don't worry. I was totally new to this world as well before I started working with Lindsay last year. Our presentation today will, cover, will be a brief overview of news games that were produced and published from the year 2015 to 2020. We will discuss the state of practice in news games and how they have the potential to be catalysts for change in the real world. Next. So what are news games? The term the term. In their book, News Game Journalism at Play examines the practice of news games and their new potential and social impact in games for change. Ultimately, what news games explore are the reasons for their production. The merge between video games and journal journalism has the capability to show people how to think differently about current events and deepen their understanding of news through playable experience. News games gather and provide information and place them into a cultural context. News games are dynamic instruments that promote discussions around social, political, or economic issues. They allow players to dig deeper into the topics presented. Choose your own adventure games, for example, is a popular format that many news games follow. This type of RPG, short for role-playing game, allows players to put themselves in the shoes of, game of the game character and empathize with their situation. Whether the game is conveyed through the use of real life footage, two dimensional illustrations, or 3D animations, compelling storytelling techniques will not only provide context, but also elevate the narratives. News games are highly visual, interactive, ludic, informative platforms that help users understand, engage, or debate on matters that correspond to the societal constructs. It has been over 10 years since the debut of the first digital news game and people were optimistic about what's to come. So what has been happening in the realm of news game? We analyzed over 50 games and shared our findings on journalismgames.com funded by the Knight Foundation. On our website, 
we provide basic information on what each game is about, the topic, the organization, or developers who produced and published the game, their last known URLs, and the color palettes used. The main purpose for this site is to archive games for other designers and researchers to help inspire new game creators and streamline the research process for people who are interested in learning more. Since we will not have the time to cover all 50 plus games individually in today's talk, we encourage anyone who is looking to learn more about news game to visit our site, journalismgames.com, where you can find more examples and useful resources. So let's talk about the state of news games today. Uh, what we're aiming to do here is to help you understand some of the most common traits of these games. So, for example, in our research, we found that the vast majority of news games with a national or international audience were actually produced by organizations primarily uh, involved in producing news. So, uh, with a much smaller group, there were people or organizations that did things like financial services or social responsibility nonprofits. Uh, as well as universities and a few news game studios. But no, most news orgs like BBC or Al Jazeera uh, dominate the production of, the production of games um, contemporarily in uh, news games. You'll also find that the games are, very, are typically very short. Uh, the bulk of them uh, offer about five minutes of gameplay experience or less, uh, and nearly 90% are 15 minutes to end to end. I often describe this as the difference between a public service announcement or PSA and a feature length documentary. Uh, asking someone to experience a two minute PSA is much less uh, commitment than a 90 minute documentary. So short and quick often meet your needs. As an example, a game we produced many years ago, it's something um, I, I created called the News Game or News Jam. Uh, this example, Hurl the Harasser, is basically about players um, getting to the point of the experience in 30 seconds or a play. And like Hurl the Harasser, the majority of games that we studied were actually editorial in nature, aiming to impart some perspective on the way the world works. The secondary category that we found most common was actually quizzes, not unlike what you'd see in the back of a magazine. Uh, and these are often oriented around players learning about themselves by answering questions in a series of common, um, com sort of common solutions. Uh, one of my favorite examples of sort of editorial games is Thoughts and Prayers, uh, which is a critical of the common offer of thoughts and prayers to solve gun violence in the US. Uh, in, this, uh, in this game, uh, neither solves the problem, neither thinking nor praying actually gets to the root of the problem. And like Thoughts and Prayers, unsurprisingly, you'll find that most news games, 95% of them, uh, are actually imp implemented in HTML and JavaScript instead of, uh, I think 10 years ago, it was much more common to do something like Flash or Shockwave even. Uh, the choice of using HTML basically increases your audience's um, uh, access, so it's, it's actually a really ni nice, lightweight technographic. Aesthetically, you'll also find that the majority of these games are done in two dimensions, um, with an, incre an increasing proportion going to 2.5D, um, so some form of isometric or pseudo-3D. Uh, and 3D is also on the rise when compared to other studies we've run around uh, persuasive play or the sort of larger domain of um, uh, creating games with social impact. And then many of these games, lastly, many of these games actually uh, use abstract representation instead of relying on very literal forms. Uh, I'm sorry, don't use abstract representation. Uh, so abstract representation is the rarest, so geometric forms, stars, triangles to mean something is the rarest, and then abstract representation, um, geometric representation, then abstract, and then finally we have much more natural. So 60% of the um, content is natural. Now, in no particular order, we will show highlights on 10 different news games that cover topics such as the news industry, business, politics, health, and war, etc. Our first news game created by the University of Cambridge, Get Bad News illustrates the relevance and importance of media literacy of today's world. It has an international aspect of using social media as a tool to deceive others. The game exemplifies strategies for players to understand how to trigger emotions, troll, impersonate other social accounts, and polarize opinions among the public. 
The game goes into the concept of disinformation in a broader sense by giving players the opportunity to gain or lose followers based on the credibility of the content they share. What Get Bad News aims to communicate is the problem that fake content creates, thereby educating the most common aspects of disinformation. Next, published by the Washington Post just last year in 2019, we have How Does an Autonomous Car Works? Not so well. The game adopts the editorial language by giving players an opinionated view on, safe, on the safety of self-driving cars. As of today, there are 1,400 self-driving cars being tested in 36 states and districts. Some deliver groceries, some act as taxis. People are now adapting to the changing tech climate. Self-driving cars promise to get passengers from point A to B. However, self-driving cars still have their limits, such as accurately detecting pedestrians or moving objects. The game invites players to be the backup driver of an autonomous car and see how well they can get through a series of obstacles on the road. Next, published by ProPublica in 2018, the waiting game is an empathy game that follows the cho uh, follow the choose your own adventure structure. The game is based on real stories and done in a 2D illustration aesthetic. It allows players to feel what it is like for someone seeking asylum in the United States. Players can follow the stories of five unnamed people starting from the moment they decide to flee their home countries. On the same note of a safety seeking journey, Two Billion Miles, published by the Channel 4 News in UK, is another empathy game that follows the choose your own adventure structure. Two Billion Miles is the estimate of all the miles traveled by refugees in 2015. Many made the choice to flee their home countries because their homes have become dangerous with limited opportunities for a better life. The game uses real life footage to convey the journey of a refugee experience. Next, we have the budget game of survival from the Straight Times, an English language daily newspaper based in Singapore. This news game challenges players budgeting skills to see how much cash they have to spare by the end of the month. Players get three profiles to choose from, a student, a family of three, or a finan financial executive all with different needs, financial backgrounds, and spending habits. The game is done in a 2.5D or isometric aesthetic that gives that playful, cubic-esque world. On the topic of survival, we have the Washington Post's aim, um, uh, Seven Ways to Defy Death, uh, which is actually more of an interactive. So in the context of um, both the, the research that we've done and the, the uh, book that I wrote, the idea is that this is less playful and more um, towards just sort of helping people understand complex concepts. So this particular one uh, aims to help readers understand scientific, scientific methods for slowing the effects of aging and decreasing mortality. Uh, the 2016 uh, game Everyday, uh, it's made by Everyday Arcade, formerly GOP Arcade, uh, called EpiPen Tycoon, uh, looks at the dark side of the business of survival, lampooning the building of an EpiPen empire. Uh, players balance investor uh, outrage with public outrage by, by manipulating the medicine's cost. So occasionally players can actually use their political connections to reset the state and you build, which is shown in that, that right-hand panel, you actually build this EpiPen um, manufacturing um, empire. Uh, in a less life or death focus, uh, the 2017 game from Vox Media College Scholarship Tycoon um, helps uh, people understand the way that uh, college rankings are um, manipulated and optimized for profits in college scholarships. So, which is um, generally one of the more complex and informative play experiences we'll actually show today. This is a fairly nuanced game. And uh, the 2017 game, The Uber Game, um, which is produced by the Financial Times, continues the tradition of a day in the life experience. We saw a lot of games that were just uh, sort of living in someone else's shoes, changing perspective, providing you uh, the daily experience. And this is a good example of that. It basically allows the players to understand the daily decisions and seeking to live life as an Uber driver. 
Uh, and lastly, just an example of playable data, uh, a concept that we've seen uh, every couple of years within the social impact space. There's the Brexit bus, which lets players drive through a graph of the economic rise and fall of the British pound, highlighting specific political events as you travel. As you can see here, you've got Theresa May officially becomes PM, and there's this big cliff on the, um, on the uh, pound. Uh, if you'd like more examples of news game work, or if you couldn't transcribe all of the data in the 15 minutes that we provided it, please grab a free copy of our report that provides more detail and methodology. It actually explains how we came to these conclusions, and it also helps you understand um, how we arrived at these perspectives and these pieces of data. Uh, it's all available completely free at that URL, journalismgames.org slash resources, as are a number of other links to um, work from people like Maxwell Foxman, who have also done a lot of work in news games. That concludes our presentation. Um, uh, I'd like to thank you. I think Katie would like to thank you as well. And uh, we should mention that we will answer questions in the Q&A um, section and hop in.